Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. I'm Keith McKinnon, and today and the following episodes, we are at the amazing Warren, Rhode Island Masonic Temple, home to Washington Lodge Number no. 3. Uh, this is an amazing building, and to be honest with you, guys who are members of the craft, this building is a must-visit in your Masonic career. Uh, now, you probably have heard over the years certain terms that are used, like, you know, you can just feel the history uh, of this place, or this place reeks of history. Um, I hate to use one of those terms, but when I first walked into this building, I've never been here before, this place not only reeked of history, it smelled of history. You could just smell the oldness of this building. Um, and that's basically one of the things where we're going to talk about today with the episode with this banner. Now, <clears throat> if by chance any of you Masons out there do come here to visit for the first time, I highly suggest you do two things. Number one, leave your cardboard box outside the door and leave your horse blinders outside the door. And what I mean by that is Many of us, including myself, we have this little box that we like to be in. It's our comfort zone. We hardly ever step out of the box, and we should. Stepping out of the box, you get to see a whole lot more than what you see. Most of you guys are just going to come into this building and say, wow, nice building. But you're not going to see the history. And this history of this building, of who built it, where the material came from and how they built it, you're going to hear later in another episode. It's a building that surpasses any other Masonic temple that I have ever been in, and I've been in a lot of them. This place is just amazing. But you need to step out of the box. And one of the other things that you got to think of when you come in here is think 1799. Think of all the grand masters that walked through that front door. Think of all the masters that have sat there in the East. This lodge was still meeting in this room during the War of 1812. The 1812 War. Brotherman probably walked into this building in 1799, maybe still wearing colonial garb. We probably had masters or brethren sitting on the sidelines during the Civil War who they, as fathers, may have lost a son during Gettysburg. This is history you don't think about when you come into a building like this. And many of us, we put on horse blinders. And what are horse blinders? That's that apparatus you put around a horse so he can't see to the right or the left. He only sees straight ahead. 95% of us put those horse blinders on, including myself, every time I go into a Masonic building or even my own building. Go in, sign in, you get your apron on, and what's the next thing you do? You put the horse blinders in, on, and that's how you go. You don't take the chance to look around. And that's one of the main things that you've got to do when you come to this building. It is just so much history here. Not only this beautiful room, of which I hope we're going to be able to take some photographs of and, and put it on our not only on the YouTube channel, but also on our Facebook uh, page once this video was mounted. But the columns, uh, the chairs, the door knockers, there's swords that John was just like drooling over um, that go back to, what, 1812, one of them, uh, or two of them? Both of them, 1812. Um, they have a beautiful banner in the back room that's hand-painted on silk of George Washington because that's the name of the lodge, Washington Lodge Number no. 3. Um, just this, for you Royal Arch Companions, you'll never no see another secret vault like this one. I'll tell you that. So there's so much history here. And the same with this banner. Now this banner came from DMLA chapter, Malden, Massachusetts. I believe it is from the late 1920s, because I think that's when the chapter was formed. I don't have an exact date. 
but Melrose and Malden had very early uh, order of DMLA chapters that were formed. This one did hang at Malden until, sadly, the building closed. And then it hung in Cambridge for a number of years. Now, it's hand-painted on silk. It's only one-sided. Most banners are double-sided. And you're going to find banners in the commandry. You're going to find banners used in the Order of Eastern Star. You're going to find banners used in, of course, the Royal Arch Chapter. Um, you're going to find banners used in Masonic Lodge, Masonic Lodges uh, and other Masonic bodies. Uh, most of them are double-sided. Uh, there is a number of them that are behind cases now that are all hand-painted on silk. And I have seen some of these banners date back to the 1850s. Uh, all the earlier ones are all done on silk. Of course, later they were done in cloth or satin, uh, embroidered. Uh, Newtonville, unfortunately, we didn't get a picture of one of those banners, but it's absolutely gorgeous. It's done both on silk, on velvet. It's got hand painting. It's got gold and silver bullion. It's just a magnificent banner. And unfortunately, most of these banners are rolled up and thrown into a, I can't say that word, a bloody closet in many of these buildings. That's what happened with this one, Cambridge. Got rolled up and it's going to be put away in a closet. No, I don't think so. This is now going to go to Adabo, where they're going to appreciate the beauty. And there's more than, than meets the eye. I once wrote for uh, the Masonic Antiques and Collectors uh, Facebook site, you know, masonry is in the eyes of the beholder, especially when it comes to the artifacts. When this may have hung in a building, 95% of the brethren walked right past it. Why? Because they got their horse blinders on. 95%. This is not a myth or a monkey. This is fact. 95% of the guys walked right past this banner. 3% or 4% may have stopped and looked at it. And say, wow, Malden chapter, Order of Demolay. 1%. 1%. If that stopped and admired it for what it is. That's not just a banner brother. That is art. That is Masonic art. Now you may not think so, but it is. That is all hand painted on silk. Now it was sold by the Harding Regalia Company, whom I presume probably bought it from one larger regalia company and had their tag put on. The regalia companies back in the day hired certain professionals to make things for the fraternity. And one of the specialties they hired people for was artists. That was their job. They painted banners, they painted aprons, they painted pieces of furniture, they painted columns, they painted altars, they did everything. All of it hand done. That's not machine made. That's not a printing, put on a printing press. It's all hand done. And these things are in almost every single one of our buildings. And it's a, I can't say that word either, stupidity that they're rolled up and hidden from the eyes, not only from the public, but from the brethren. Because we all did one thing. Every single one of us that's in this room right now, no matter what jurisdiction you are from, no matter if you're across the pond or any part of the world, as a Mason, and I'm not giving away any secrets here, we all did the exact, exact same thing. And that is, and many Masons don't know what that means. That's knowledge. You knocked at the door of Freemasonry. You sought further knowledge. That is knowledge. It tells you a time period when things were done by hand. When things like this banner was hung in the Demolay chapter room and were admired. When they took pride in such pieces. 
we've gotten away from that. So with that, brethren, I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, Masonic Curators is being brought to you in part by Whence Came You Podcast, the Massachusetts Lodge of Research, and the Masonic Historical Preservation Society. We do urge you to, if you like what you see, they're going to laugh at me, but thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We've got a thousand subscribers now. See us on Facebook, and you're going to find us all over the place now. Uh, we're also uh, over in the UK on a couple of sites, and the Pennsylvania Grand Royal Arts Chapter has also posted one of our videos. So we're making headway. So with that, I want to thank you on behalf of the entire crew here at Masonic Curators, and continue watching. Thank you.